Section 5.3 deals with a new type of proof called indirect proof. Take out your notes and put this into your table of contents. So indirect proof is also known as proof by contradiction, or by the Latin reductio ad absurdum. In order to prove something is true, what we do is we first assume that what we're trying to prove is false, and then show that that is somehow ridiculous. It's kind of like proving using a contrapositive. So we show that the assumption is ridiculous using deductive logic, either by contradicting uh, given information or different other, other facts like uh, theorems, definitions, stuff like that. So why do we use uh, indirect proof and when do we use it? So we generally use uh, indirect proof Excuse me. <laughs> we generally use uh, indirect proof when the word not is in there, or there, there's some not symbol, like the not equals sign. That usually indicates the need for an indirect proof. So the format for these indirect proofs follows four steps. The first step is when we make an assumption. We assume that the proof statement is false. Uh, so that's the negation step. Next, we're using deductive logic to show that this uh, assumption somehow leads to a contradiction. Either it contradicts given information or some established fact. Then we point out the contradiction and say, well, if there was a contradiction, that means our original assumption was false, so therefore that original statement must be true. Let's walk through a few examples. That first step, taking the negation of a, uh, of a statement, let's uh, work through a few examples. If we want to prove that a rectangle has four sides, the negation, of course, is a rectangle does not have five sides. Don't specifically say three, don't specifically say five, just not four. If we want to prove that the speed limit is 55, we assume that the speed limit is not 55. If we want to uh, prove that x, whatever x is, if we want to prove that x is less than four, uh, the common thing to say is x is greater than four, but that's not exactly accurate. If you think of a number line, we want to prove that x is less than 4. Less than 4 does not include the number 4, and so the negation would include the number 4. So the proper negation is x is greater than or equal to 4. And lastly, if we want to prove that triangle PQR is isosceles, we assume that it would not be isosceles, and then somehow we would prove that would be uh, the case. So here's an example. Let's say we're given, uh, you have an obtuse triangle, and we want to prove that there is only one obtuse angle in that triangle. So remember our four steps. We first assume the opposite of what we're trying to prove. We show that this means uh, leads to some type of contradiction, either given information or uh, established fact. Point out the contradiction, and then conclude the opposite of our assumption. In other words, conclude that there is indeed only one obtuse angle in the triangle. So let's work through an example. First, we assume the opposite of what we're trying to prove. Assume there is not only one obtuse angle. In other words, we assume there's more than one obtuse angle. So this means that we could have two angles greater than 90 degrees. So an angle greater than 90 plus another angle greater than 90 plus any other angle is going to be greater than 180. And that's the contradiction, right? This contradicts the triangle sum theorem, which states the sum of the interior angles of a triangle must be 180 degrees. So therefore, our assumption in step one was false. We conclude that there can be only one obtuse angle in an obtuse triangle. Let's look at another example. Given that x squared plus 8 is less than or equal to 12, prove that x must be less than or equal to 2. Well, if we assume the opposite, that x is greater than 2, well then, that means that x squared has to be greater than 2 squared. Right? We're just squaring both sides of an equation. So x squared is greater than 4. Well, this means, if we added 8 to both sides, that x squared has to be greater than, pardon, x squared plus 8 has to be greater than 12, and that's our contradiction. Right? That contradicts the given statement that x squared plus 8 is less than or equal to 12. Therefore, x must be less than or equal to 2. 
Here's a geometric example for you. Let's say in this figure, we're given that segment MO is congruent to ON, MP is not congruent to NP, and we want to prove that angle MOP is not congruent to NOP. So we first assume that they are congruent. In other words, that those little angles are congruent. Well, with that first piece of given information, we know that MO equals ON, pardon, is congruent to ON. And we've got that shared side, so we can prove that those two triangles are congruent, MOP and NOP, using side angle side. Well, then that means that MP must be congruent to NP. But wait a minute. That specifically contradicts given information. Therefore, our assumption in step one was wrong, and we must conclude the opposite, right? We must conclude that MOP is not congruent to NOP. Let's look at one more example. Here we have another triangle, DEF. We're given that angle D is not congruent to angle F, and we're trying to prove, therefore, that DE is not equal to EF. Well, let's assume the opposite of what we're trying to prove. So we assume DE equals DF. Well, that means that triangle DEF is isosceles, right? Because by definition, all uh, two legs congruent means isosceles. Well, isosceles triangles have congruent base angles, which means angle D must be congruent to angle F. And there's our contradiction. We were given that those two angles were not congruent which means our assumption has to be wrong. Therefore, if D is not congruent to angle F, it must be true that segment DE is not equal to EF.